family members. You're all my family members. It's a great day to be a mountaineer. A great day in life of sea pass. History, 85 years. Say it again, 85 years of steady graduates. My friends, our world is open. When I call your name, inductees, please stand and be recognized. Starting first, sit down, Sam Booth. Sam, come on, Sam. Sam. Please just stand there, wait. Don't come up here, stand here. We're good, just wait. That's a pants up for that, yeah. David Cope, DC. Stand up, DC, welcome back. John Gay. They will be with Sniper, John Gay, outstanding <laughs> alumni. Ready? Orlando, Tick, Hedrick, Schaefer. The name, stand up, Tick, you're the best. <laughs> Mr. President, Dave Mahoney. Dave, stand up, buddy. The <laughs> first. Gotcha. Our outstanding alumni, Gene Arian. Gene, stand up, Gene. Yeah, hey, come on. It's a nice celebration, so stand packed. We're ready. First of all, recognize all previous Hall of Fame members. Stand up. CBAS Hall of Fame members, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Good job. Yes. Yes. We're not done yet. CPAS faculty, please stand and be recognized. Current and past faculty members. Stand up, please. The whole working. Thank you. I've got a quiz for the faculty members. I have a picture. You must 1991 picture. John, are you here, John? I'll pass it around. Give me the names of people. In fact, the course you're in here. All right, we got you. CPAS great staff members, stand up. Current and past, CPAS staff, we can't do it without you. Please stand up. You're the back of what we do. Thank you so much. Yes, wave. Wave. Let's thank Kim Camion and the worker bees. Scratched Please stand and be recognized. Kim, all the students tonight. Yes, stand up. It's your night. 15 minutes of fame. We got you. Okay. We get the program, Paul Pryor, one of my bosses. Be nice, be kind, be good. Come up here, Paul. Oh, good thing, see, fast is great. Paul, come here, Paul. Your breathing, please. Good evening. So I'm not sure if I'm the comic relief, but after that, I, maybe not. So at any rate, it's, it's, it's indeed a pleasure to be with you all this evening. and to enjoy this wonderful occasion. Congratulations to, to our inductees this evening. You know, as a former dean at two institutions, I understand how special evenings like this are, and I know that our inductees are indeed worthy of, of your recognition. So thanks, Dana, for inviting me to speak tonight. And, and I realize that some of you are probably sitting there thinking, so what the heck is this arts guy doing here? Uh, however, I, I do want to say that, you know, it's that this college is, is basically, um, I welcome the opportunity to, to speak here and, and to, to mingle with the people whom I've uh, contacted with, uh, been in contact with tonight. So I can tell you that you know, when I was in high school, academics taught me nothing about discipline, about self-preservation. I learned that on the football field as a cornerback and on the track as a middle distance runner. So the daily routine required to compete taught me what it takes to be successful and taught me so much about myself. I certainly didn't learn that stuff in the classroom. So I'm grateful for those experiences and I know that you all are as well. So let me rhetorically ask, um, what do our inductees have in common besides being athletes? First of all, they're mountaineers, yeah. WVU CPAS alumni, that's great common ground. Second, most of them have earned doctoral degrees. That's important. Thirdly, they have many high levels of achievement. But what stood out to me and what I was thinking, when I was trying to think of what to talk about tonight, when I looked at the bios, what stood out to me tonight 
was that our inductees have truly inspiring, dedicated service to others. These folks are paying it forward. They know that service is the lifeblood of society and the most integral part of educating students today. So Mother Teresa once said that at the end of life, we will not be judged by how many diplomas we have received, not by how much money we've made, nor by how many things, great things we've done along the way. We'll be judged by our love of and service to others. So all of our recipients tonight are servant leaders. They understand the sacrifice of time and energy it takes to make this world a better place for those who follow. They know that tackling challenges is to ensure our, your grandsons and granddaughters have better chances in life. And they know that hard work and collaboration with others are, are the only ways to improve society. So our inductees have served many types of organizations, some academic, some not. And it's safe to say that their bios don't come anywhere near to detailing all the types of service that they've executed in their lives. But as you can see, their service has been felt by many in the National Athletic Trainers Association, university academic leadership, publishing companies, Pennsylvania Commonwealth Educational System, Omicron Delta Kappa National Organization, American Association for University Administrators, American Physical Therapy Association, American Board of Physical Therapist Specialties, and Women's Health Specialty Council. This is quite an impressive list of service activities and organizations. These inductees live the example of Mahatma Gandhi who once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. The inductees tonight exemplify giving of themselves in this way. So let me finish by saying the College of Physical Activity and Sports Science can be proud of their inductees this evening. So basically, I just want to say thank you very much for being here this evening to everybody. And thank you to Cynthia, David, John, Lana, Daniel, and Jean for all their great service to others. Congratulations, and let's go. Thank you. I invite Mary Kay Quinn, Chair of Committee, come forward, please. Mary Kay. Oh, there you are. Well, I would like the visiting committee members to stand, please. Well, for those of you who are not familiar with what the visiting committee does, I'm going to tell you. We are alums who give back to CPAS and the university by donating our time to attend meetings and events being held throughout the year. The committee members are here this weekend for a series of meetings and events. They will return in the spring, and so will I. I have been on the visiting committee for quite a few years and I can tell you the members work very hard to support the Dean and CPAS. Some of the more current projects we have worked on are research poster presentations, and that research is done by the students, speed mentoring, we help with the Wall of Honor, the Hall of Fame ceremony, and the 85th anniversary, which as Dana said, this is, this is the year. Visiting committee members are an amazing group of loyal mountaineers. At this time, I will introduce the next speaker, Kathy Lipkovich, Chair of the Hall of Fame Committee. Good evening. On behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our five inductees tonight, their families, friends, and colleagues. This evening, we are gathered to celebrate each inductee into the College of Physical Activity and Sports Science Hall of Fame. Their accomplishments, achievements, and professional success in their respective disciplines epitomizes what it means to be a graduate of 
West Virginia University. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of the Hall of Fame Committee who have worked so diligently this past year in the selection process of candidates. Please remain standing after I call your name. Dr. Bill Elsock, please stand, and Paul Grace, please stand. There was one other member of the Hall of Fame Committee, Martha Thorne, could not be here tonight due to health reasons. But, uh, these gentlemen and Martha have done an outstanding job this past year. Yeah. I would also be remiss if I didn't really thank Ken Camion back there, sitting there very quietly. She's a valuable assistant for our computer and expertise during the past year. So thank you, Kim. Each of these five inductees began their professional journey within the walls of this university. They have obtained outstanding careers worthy of our recognition. The Hall of Fame Committee welcomes each of you back home to Almost Heaven, West Virginia, where your journey first started. Our first inductee this evening is Cynthia Sam Booth. Dr. Booth is a graduate of WVU's athletic training program and was one of the first females to gain certification as an athletic trainer and one of the few women to serve on the National Athletic Trainers Association Board of Directors. In 2007, Sam was inducted into the NATA Hall of Fame and into the Minnesota Athletic Trainers Hall of Fame in 2003. Dr. Booth has spent 22 years in higher education with experiences in teaching and service at several institutions, along with 12 years in management of clinical and hospital operations. Sam is currently serving as an administrator within the Division of Palliative Care, University of Rochester Medical Center. For publications, presentations and awards are too numerous to mention. Dr. Booth's life work can be best described by a colleague who stated, Sam's entire career can be summed up in three words, service, leadership, and mentorship. Introducing Dr. Booth this evening is Dr. Linda Carson. for a reason, friends for a season, and rarely friends for a lifetime. Sam, I'm so grateful that you are a lifelong friend. Feels like three lifetimes, actually. <laughs> well, her impressive uh, resume speaks for itself, and you have a summary of it, of her truly amazing career, and it spans from education to Healthcare. This isn't Sam's first awards night or even Hall of Fame ceremony. As you've heard, she's already been inducted into multiple Halls of Fame. So tonight, CPAS adds another to the list for your exemplary and tireless dedication to your work. I'd like to say a few words about Sam, the person. My earliest memory of Sam Booth which is more than 40 years ago, is when she was telling me where she was from in West Virginia. Oak Hill. <laughs> I was new to West Virginia, so I wasn't sure where that was or how this felt. <laughs> but I knew she was proud of it. I learned quickly from those conversations and from my observations that she was a product of a very special family. Because of her family's values, she arrived at WVU with internalized standards of excellence, strong faith, and a nurturing spirit. And that was a perfect fit for her selection 
of an academic major in physical education teaching and an emphasis in athletic training. Plus, she arrived at just the right time to provide leadership for the very first WVU women's basketball team fresh off of Title IX. And Coach Kitty Blakemore has nurtured and mentored a lot of student athletes over the years. But Sam and the others that were part of that very first basketball team remain very special to Kitty even to this day. So Sam, I think that Coach Blakemore is especially proud of you tonight. Under the inspired mentorship of John Spiker, Sam found her professional passion in athletic training. And over the years, she absolutely excelled, becoming highly regarded for her countless contributions to athletic training at the national, regional, state, and local levels. CPAS laid a very strong foundation for Sam's future roles as a teacher, a trainer, professor, a manager, an administrator, and a mentor. So here's my point. Success happens at the crossroads of preparation and opportunity. And at every opportunity across a career path that had some twists and turns and across varied disciplines, Sam's preparation from family and from right here in CPAS provided just what she needed to be successful at every new opportunity. So without reservation, I'd like to recommend my friend for life, Cindy Sam Booth, for induction into the CPAS Hall of Fame. $5. Thank you. It is certainly an honor to stand here before you as an inductee into the CPAS Hall of Fame. I would like to thank the visiting committee for their selection for me to be inducted. I also want to congratulate the other members the other inductees into the Hall of Fame. This is a very special moment, not only to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, but to be inducted with my dear friend, DC. DC and I went through undergraduate school here. And it wasn't until this morning that I found out that he and I had exactly similar pathways into athletic training. For you see, DC was a soccer player here, and I was on the women's basketball player, basketball team, excuse me. Well, DC injured his ankle. That brought him to the athletic training room. I injured my ankle. That brought me to the training room. And who took care of us was an alum, a colleague and dear friend,
who was a GA at the time, Mr. Paul Grace. Paul, forever indebted to you. And it was through the rehab and treatment that I thought, you know, I can, I, I like this. And I wouldn't have to spend 10 years in medical school. So Paul said, you need to go talk to John Spiker. And John at that time was a newbie from Pitt. No, Penn. Pen. I got it all wrong. That's what happens after 40 years of being in school. Oh, you would see. Oh, cool. Anyway, he started the athletic training curriculum here. He developed it, made it into a national and international program. He has students that are all over the United States and international that he has mentored, that he himself would get on the telephone call, telephone and make calls at all hours to make sure his students, his graduates, would be in jobs or in GA positions. And he is still doing that to this day. And he was able to do that because of a very caring wife who served as a mother to many of us in the athletic training program. And John would say, I have to extend to you my eternal gratefulness. Thank you. I've watched their kids grow up and one even fall into the whirlpool <laughs> in the old football stadium. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a wonderful journey in athletic training. CPAS has given me, as Dr. Carson alluded to, the foundation that allowed me to do what I did and loved for so many years. From the athletic training standpoint, my mentors were not only John, but Sam Kedris in those early years, and Paul Grace. From a physical education standpoint, Coach Kitty Blakemore and Martha Thorne. Both Kitty and Martha were the pioneers, the foremothers, if you will, in getting women's sports going at WVU. They paved the way for women's athletics. And at that time, they did it while teaching a full load and advising. Kitty was my advisor. She was my mother away from home. And I'm gonna deviate just a minute just to tell you a, a little story. Back in those days, we were AIEW. There weren't all the rules and regulations that there are today. I went in for an advisement session with Kitty and we had a conflict in the class and so she tried to get all of our classes early morning so we could get to practice in the middle to late afternoon. And my conflict was I had a class at the Coliseum and then I had a class downtown. And how was I going to make it? Because the PRT was just getting started and you couldn't count on it. And the best way to get around was hitchhiking from campus to campus. I couldn't rely on that. So Kitty said, Sam, I have a pass, and I forget what lot it was, but it was just right behind the, um, I almost said sanitarium. <laughs> No. No. The union. What's that called? Mount Larry, thank you. See? See? You see what happens? And so she said, I'll leave my car keys under my mat, under the driver's seat. And you go up from class, take my car down, park in that lot, then come back and bring my car and park it there and put the key back under the mat. And so that's what I did for a semester. 
That is unheard of. You'd be nowadays with NCAA. But that's how kind, giving, caring she was. And she instilled in me those qualities that allowed me to go on to be successful as a, a, a professor, as an advisor. My favorite time in college as a professor was advising students. I could just do that until I die. That's how much passion that she instilled in me. From CPAS, I also ha have Dr. Carson and Dean Dana Brooks to thank. They were GAs in the years that I was an undergraduate student. And they taught me survival. If it wasn't for Linda Carson assisting many of us undergraduate students, Sarah Roberts and myself especially, we would have never gotten through those cassette tapes that Dr. Wigan had us listen to instead of go to class. <laughs> And then Dean Brooks taught me the other side of academics to have more of a work-life balance. And he got me on the all-pros intramural team, flag football team. So you know, there's a lot of connections we have in this room. When I got here tonight, I see Pete Zulia. I see Chad Starkey. I see Paul Grace. I see Kathy Lipkovich, who was, was um, um, one of the women's basketball was with women's basketball when I was playing. Um, you know, it's just about networking. It's all about family. This morning we had a great opportunity, uh, DC and Jean and I, to talk with a group of students. And we talked about networking. And we talked about how athletic training is such an incestual uh, uh, group because John has had his tentacles out nationally and internationally that no matter where you go, you run into a mountaineer, a mountaineer athletic trainer or a mountaineer graduate. And it's instilled in us the passion for the blue and gold. I always love, now that I'm in Rochester, New York, knowing that I, I come right through Morgantown and it gives me a chill every time that I pull off the Star City exit to come through Morgantown and look at all the changes. It makes me proud. And so I thank you. I thank CPAS for giving me such a wonderful education as well as WVU. But my fondest memories are all about play. You have to play. Not just to win, but play to have fun. And so I'm going to leave you with this quote from Sir Winston Churchill. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. John, thank you for giving to all of us. Thank you for this induction. this evening is David D.C. Holt. He is also a graduate of West Virginia University's athletic training program. D.C. has been an athletic trainer at Temple University, Northwest Missouri State University, and the United States Air Force Academy. He is currently an associate professor and the athletic training program director for Mid-America Nazarene University. Dr. Colt was inducted into the NATA Hall of Fame in 2008 and the Mid-America Athletic Trainers Association Hall of Fame in 2007. Most impressive, he was the Vision II Athletic Trainer of the Year in 2006. DC is a member of the NATA Hall of Fame Committee, Board of Directors, and their Board of Certification. Dr. David Holt is a consummate volunteer to a variety of activities within his church and community of Olathe, Kansas. Introducing Dr. Colt this evening is Mr. John Spiker. Oh, this is a 
great turnout, and we're so proud of all the uh, people that are here, and certainly we have a great athletic training representation. I don't mean that's the only program, but we do have a great representation tonight. We thank you for that. Uh, as Sam has alluded to, we've we just we kind of started off as so one little family. We maybe took six people in our first class, of which she was one. DC was another. And uh, we just kind of have grown through the years to become very close because it's just classes are small. Classes are, you know, about 15 uh, per year. But when you do it 40 years, you've still got a lot of people out there. And of course, we have a graduate program as well. So we probably have about 1,000 graduates out there. And uh, it's all about helping each other and working together. Uh, as Sam said, uh, we really work hard to network, but nobody has worked harder than DC. DC uh, was, has been a great leader in the NATA, as was alluded to there a moment ago. And not only has he uh, been a great leader in the NATA, He's worked tirelessly for the NATA Foundation, the fundraising area that uh, tries to uh, raise money for political action groups and for people to uh, get recognition to go to Capitol Hill, et cetera, for the uh, profession. Uh, DC not only came here, and by the way, I did not realize we were recruiting a bunch of cripples and they all met in the athletic training room. Maybe we should have rethought that a little bit, but nevertheless, uh, Paul, thanks for getting it back out there. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, DC uh, has uh, has been, as I say, a constant advocate for athletic training uh, in Missouri and uh, throughout the country. Uh, he not only helped us recruit uh, his fellow classmates to some degree, uh, we recruited his brother. So uh, Tom is also athletic trainer who's currently uh, the assistant athletic trainer with the Detroit Lions that, uh, that Dave talked into coming here as well. So uh, DC and I remain very close through the years and uh, I, I couldn't say enough good things about him. I, I really couldn't. He's just one of the best people I've ever met in my life. And uh, it's truly an honor to uh, be able to introduce him uh, and to recognize him in this organization. He brought with him uh, this trip, or she came with him, Kelly Quinlan, who's also one of our graduates, who uh, just recently received an award, a national award as well. So we're very happy to have Kelly here uh, with DC, and I know he's proud to have her. Uh, we have, we're now into the uh, second and third generations, so we're happy with that. But it's my distinct honor to uh, introduce DC. Thank you. say when you want to say it, and you forget how to say it, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, Dean Brooks, thank you very much. Visiting Committee, thank you very much. Hall of Fame Committee, thank you very much um, for this honor. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a joy to come back to Morgantown. I don't get back here that often. Um, as an athletic trainer, uh, those of you that understand the profession understand that we work on weekends. You know? And so I've yet to be back to a home football game except as a visiting athletic trainer with Temple University in 1979. Um, we happened to open up the season here, the last season of Old Mountaineer Field. Some of you might have been at that game. Um, and John and I were laughing uh, last night about, you guys understand, 
If you were at Old Mountaineer Field and saw the band come through the tunnel, you know, that was kind of a cool thing. Everybody got fired up. Well, um, as a soccer player, the visiting football locker room was our locker room up that tunnel. I was there every day. But I didn't realize what it was like to be there at a home football game. When the band comes into that tunnel and you're in the locker room with your team and they start beating those drums, holy <laughs> mackerel, that's loud. I mean, you really can't hear yourself. And John and I were talking about, you know, the coach is out there talking to the heat. <laughs> And it's like, what do you say? And then you go out and you play. And I think, I think we got beat that day. I'm not sure. Um, but that was my first experience as a visitor at WVU. And I didn't realize how rabid we were as fans. Um, and then the next time I came back was Temple's basketball team. I don't know if it was the spring of 80 or 81. We um, had an NIT basketball game here. And you were the hosts. And I was with the basketball team, and holy mackerel, I, I was getting pelted with stuff behind me. <laughs> I said, whoa. Um, I'm glad I was a student here. Um, it gave me an appreciation for what uh, the visitors has to, have to go through. Um, but congratulations to all the other inductees tonight, and Sam, right back at you. Um, it's really an honor to go in with you. Um, and Paul, um, thank you very much. Um, I laugh but every time I'll, every now and again I'll, I'll, I'll joke around with you and I'll say, you know, you're the reason I walk the way I do today. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta look at that two different ways. Is it my gait or is it the man I am? And John and Paul, you both have a role in it, so thank you very much. Um, I came here in 1972 as a soccer player and I was a pre-pharmacy major. My dad ran a drugstore in Buffalo, New York, and I was going to take over the business. Yeah, um, physical chemistry got in the way. I got through <laughs> a lot of chemistry and a lot of physics, but the PCAM got me. And that's about the time I got hurt, and Paul was taking care of me. And I, just like Sam said, um, I got in there, and I said, you do this for a living? He goes, yeah, this is pretty cool. I, I could do this. And he sent me to John and the whole thing. And I just, Sam, thanks for sharing the speech. Good job. <laughs> Um, but we did, we had, we had, a, you had an awesome group of people here with um, Sam Kegris and Bud Tice. The three of you um, were great mentors. Um, yeah, everybody knows John. Um, and John is John, and John is awesome. And um, he's a great man. Sam Kegris was an ultra conservative John. And Bud Tice was a former Vietnam vet. Still is. Not a formal. Um, but he served in Vietnam as a medic and um, didn't care who he assaulted and didn't care if he yelled at you or not. He wanted you, he wanted to shake you the way he wanted to shake you. And it was a great team of, of guys um, to help us become good people and good athletic trainers. Um, and I so appreciate that. Um, um, another guy here tonight who um, I played soccer with, my college roommate, who was inducted into this Hall of Fame two years ago was Ron Shoecraft. Ron, where'd you end up? Over here. Uh, she was so good to see you, thanks for being here. Um, <laughs> when we lived up there on Belmore Avenue, up at the top of the hill, across from the Beta House, we, we just had a beat up house, and it's still there somehow. Um, we had some good times up there. Who knew, you know, we'd both be in this uh, CPAS Hall of Fame later on. We just made a pretty good house there, didn't we? Yeah, good times. Uh, with Shoe, thanks for being here. Um, Awesome goalie, got beat up a lot on that old Mountaineer field turf. Um, that, that paint in the end zone was um, different than what we have today. And I, I know you got a lot of scars from diving on that stuff still today. I have so many people to thank. Um, you know, my family, um, I, my family couldn't be here tonight for a lot of different reasons. They're all over, we're all over the map. Um, but my other family, Kelly, uh, Quinlan back here, she's here. She's my other daughter. Um, she was actually a student of mine at Northwest, and um, I sent her to grad school because I knew that she'd do a great job, and I didn't want to uh, send somebody here that wasn't going to be good. And she ended up really good, and I hired her back as an assistant. And when I left Northwest Missouri State, she, um, um, they took my advice, and they hired her um, as the head athletic trainer. She's been there for the last 10 years as the head. Been there 15 years, and the, the award um, with, um, was mentioned earlier was the um, Division II Athletic Trainer of the Year. So congratulations, Kelly, and thanks for being here. Um, 
Last thing I want to say is um, a couple things. But, um, you know, these halls of fame, and I get joked around a lot about different awards, and, and it's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I, I, it's really an honor, and it's so humbling. Um, but the people that um, also I think we need a hall of fame for is the spouses of athletic trainers. Um, you don't understand what they go through. Um, the travel that we um, have to endure, um, the, the, the weekends away, the nights away, um, and if there was a polycan for spouses, say you'd be the first to come back to you. So, um, it, is, it is an honor, and I, 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 I don't want this to um, think any I want you to think any different, but I don't appreciate this, and I'm not honored. But I got to read something, um, and Paul, I, I appreciate your comments um, and your introductory remarks because I think it goes to what I'm about to read here. Uh, there's an artist, a songwriter by name Nicole Nordeman, and I don't know if anybody's ever heard her, um, but she's got a song that's called Legacy, and it has to do with a lot of what you said, and I'll try to read it to you. Um, whose water is this? Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure somebody wasn't sick before I did that. <laughs> but, um, I want to read you the lyrics of this song because it means a lot to me and it expresses how I feel about awards, um, even, even though it's, it's, it's awesome and I appreciate it. It goes like this, I don't mind if you've got something nice to say about me. Who can't relate to that? I enjoy an accolade like the rest, and you can make you can take my picture and hang it in a gallery of all the who's who's and so and so's that used to be the best at such and such. I won't lie, it feels all right to see your name in lights. We all need an atta boy or an atta girl, but in the end, I'd like to hang my hat. I'm more besides the temporary trappings of this world. I want to leave a legacy. How will you, how will they remember me? Did I choose to love? Did I point to you enough to make a mark on things? I want to leave an offering, a child of mercy and grace, who blessed your name unapologetically and leave that kind of legacy. Not well traveled, not well read, not well to do or well bred. Just want to hear instead well done, good and faithful one. Our next inductee is John Gay. He received his doctorate from WVU in curriculum and instruction and has held a variety of teaching and administrative positions in health education. He chaired the Department of Health Studies at South Australian College of Advanced Education in Australia. His postdoctoral studies is impressive. They have included John Hopkins University and Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Gay has been most instrumental in the development and implementation of a variety of health education programs, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels. In addition, he has either chaired or been an active member of over 36 regional and national committees in higher education. And he has been a consultant to 29 organizations that include W.B. Saunders, Harper and Rowe, and the National Healthcare Institute. In addition, John has served on the visiting committee of CPAS for six years. Dr. Gay is unable to be with us this evening due to health reasons. Speaking on his behalf will be Dr. Bill Elsaw. Good evening. Uh, TC, this is just in case you have anything. Uh, Dean, 
Associate Provost, Madam Chairman, honorees in the Hall of Fame, ladies and gentlemen. I'm privileged to say a few words that John sent me uh, earlier this month. Um, he was gravely ill. Um, and this is his presentation to this group. I'm honored to have been chosen to join so many gifted professionals for this honor. I apologize for not being able to attend in person, but health issues preclude this trip. I am with you in heart and spirit. I have asked Bill to address you with a few remarks, brief as instructed. If they're in person, I would ramble. Bill, thanks for delivering this message to everyone tonight and for the support you've given me throughout the years. WVU, CPAS, and I have grown into a wonderful relationship during and following my doctoral studies. Total campus experience and fellowship display were factors in shaping my career and my educational philosophy. In essence, all did as prescribed, encouraging me to do my best as an educator. Dr. Fred Dutch Halter, whom a few of you would know or have heard of, was a mentor and confidant that guided my decision making even after leaving WVU. For that, I am grateful. Dr. Bill Douglas was instrumental in keeping me a part of the WVU family and maintained communications after both of us retired. This list is long of the many who befriended me, opened their homes, and guided me in a manner not seen at other institutions. I tried to emulate this behavior throughout my career a number of the institutions. Also important are those individuals who helped me transition from a naval officer to an academic-centered individual. Had it not been for the input of faculty and friends at WVU, I am sure my path in academics and administration would have been less productive. Be it in social settings, at national meetings, or upon my periodic return to WVU, people would ask, where are you now? They really cared. For decades throughout my professional journey, Dana Brooks has been there to collaborate and check on me, and does so to this day. My affiliations with the medical school also helped in an unequaled educational experience across disciplines. The late Doug Elliott, another treasured colleague and good friend, also influenced my academic growth. There's a lot to be said about some somewhat serious academic discussions over a beer or two or at the poker games at Whitey Gwynn's house, or over pizza dinners. These are memories that make WVU and CPAS special. It has been my wife, Casey, and my honor to designate CPAS as a major recipient of our estate. The purpose is to provide classroom-related research funds for faculty. It has been long held that student involvement and student-centered research is a valuable learning experience for all. Hopefully our gift will serve to perpetuate excellence in CPAS and inspire others as it has me. Thank you for this honor. I deeply regret not being here for such a special occasion. May I add this to John and Casey, we wish you were here. 
I know I speak for the CPAS family and everyone in the room here tonight. You are in our thoughts and prayers. Be well. Alana Tick Hedrick Schaefer received both her undergraduate and graduate degrees from WVU and also pursued a degree in athletic training. Tick has been an instructor in kinesiology for over 35 years on the campus of Penn State Altoona. She has also coached women's volleyball, basketball, and tennis. Her impressive volleyball record of 454 wins and 135 losses is only matched by being named Coach of the Year in the WPCC six times and the Pennsylvania Collegiate Conference Coach of the Year four times. She has been very instrumental in the development of volleyball clinics and camps within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and Ohio. Tick remains very active in the community, especially with the American Red Cross and Special Olympics. Introducing Olana Hendrick Schaefer this evening is Fredina Ingle. Good evening. As a true Nittany Lion, I don't stand a chance in this room. So tonight, could I be an honorary Mountaineer, please? I'm pleased to be presenting Alana Tick Hedrick Schaefer to be inducted into the WBU CPAS Hall of Fame. Wow, what a mouthful that is. Um, her passion and commitment to helping others is truly, truly inspiring. Alana has accomplished, as you can read in the program, and Kathy stated, so many things academically and athletically at Penn State Altoona. Teaching over 35 years and coaching over 27 years with her record of 505 wins and 175 losses speaks for itself. She is the winningest coach of all time at Penn State Altoona leading a program from junior college status to an NCAA Division III program. Now, I would like to share with you just a couple of things that you won't read in the program, but I happen to know because after retiring after 37 years at Penn State, I know a lot about her. Academically, in the classroom, one of the courses I want to talk was human sexuality. Now, back then, wow, believe me, she was the talk of the campus. What she taught those kids, students, they will never forget her. They were walking around going, oh my God, can you believe she said this and did this? I mean, it was just incredible. Am I right? Uh-huh. And I can, um, athletically, as a coach, she taught her athletes so much more back in those days. And as a coach, she was also like a mother to these young women, both on and off the court. She was so much of a mother that, now remember, this was a long time ago, she told those young ladies what underwear they could and could not wear under their uniform pants the day of the game and flowers were not permitted. Now, if you can, and no parents even complained. How about that? That's amazing in itself. Those were the good old days. Um, Alana was an exceptional coach and the director of athletics dream. Obviously, winning is nice, but she always knew the NCAA rules and regulations. You know, she wasn't trying to go in a back door to get something accomplished. She did it honestly and up front, and I never had to ask her for anything twice. 
And most importantly, in my mind, she developed character of young women who always represented Penn State, Altoona, with class and distinction. As her former director of athletics and my lifetime friend, I personally want to say thank you for all you have done and continue to do. We don't say those words enough in life, so thank you. I am honored to present to you someone who is certainly deserving of this distinguished award, Alana Tiff Hedrick Schaefer. Now that I'm old, I have to kind of wear glasses most of the time to be able to see. But I want to thank Ferdina, who is, as she says, was a colleague, I was teaching a colleague, assistant, uh, an athletic director, who was my boss, and who was a dear friend, as she says, lifetime. We go way back. And if you're wondering, she is one of the only people to call me by my real name because we were both named for our fathers. So uh, thank you, Ferdina, for those kind words. Dean Brooks, distinguished faculty, staff, Hall of Fame members, and fellow inductees, family, and my friends, I want to say that I'm deeply honored to join my fellow inductees in this uh, prestigious award that we're receiving. It's quite an honor and I'm deeply moved. My father was a football player in the 30s and even though he was a devoted mountaineer, he never pressured my sister and I to come to West Virginia. But we both did and we both became physical education majors. When I first came I was pretty dumb, young, and naive as most freshmen are. Really dumb, young, and naive. And uh, I was the typical jock. I was learning in Emore Hall, learning from the seniors how to play bridge. That was a big thing. They taught us how to play bridge. And my sister was doing her thing as a cheerleader and eventually as head cheerleader. So we did follow separate paths, but we do have physical education degrees. Uh, we were, back in those days, we taught, um, we were instructed in lifetime sports. I didn't know how important those things were gonna be later on in my career. But uh, throughout my, my time here, I learned that the majors, I call them majors, the phys ed majors, we had a special bond. Pretty much like family, we did lots of things together and uh, we had all of our classes together. And there were two individuals that uh, student friends of mine that I will recognize as I continue, but they really had a, an impact on the direction that I took in both my teaching, coaching, and professional career. So, uh, as I said, our classes were directed towards activity classes, and I had the instructors that I had really shaped me into the teacher that I was to become. Kitty Blakemore probably the most important and influential individual that I had as a, as a student because not only did she teach me volleyball skills, which as she, Ferdina just told you, I coached for 28 years, she gave me lessons in life. She was such a caring and compassionate individual and taught us other things beyond just the skills of the sports. I did get an excellent skills background from her. Uh, Bruce Wilmot 
taught me folk and square dance. Thank you, Bruce. I, and uh, 20 years after I left here, Bruce was sending me information on folk and square dances that I learned when I was back here in school. And I was teaching my students those same square dances that I, and folk dances that I learned here. Charity White taught me anatomy and physiology. And as Fredita says, it uh, came out in, in the human sexuality classes that I was teaching. It was a wonderful experience, and as she said, I did tell it like it was. And those students knew the real deal. So, uh, and as my husband says, when he tells people what I did at Penn State, he says, she taught sex. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, but I went through my four years, and when I first started, I really wasn't sure that I wanted to teach. I, again, I was very backward, kind of shy. I love sports. So I said, well, I'm going to do the physical education thing. We'll see how that progresses. When I, grabbed, when I uh, became a senior, I said, I want to take a couple more classes. And so I was supposed to do my student teaching the following semester in the fall. But when August came around, they were in need of a new graduate assistant. And I happened to be in the right place at the right time. So I actually never did student teaching. To this day, I have never done student teaching. So as a GA, my first experience was a swimming class. The first day that I walked in there, literally, I was scared to death. I was almost to the point of throwing up. And I tried to get them to, to do something. And it was just at an impasse. Nobody would do anything. I couldn't get any response of anything out of them. And my friend, my one friend that uh, has been a lifelong friend for me, was sitting in the stands. And she came down and she said, now listen. She gave me some tips, some pointers, and I managed to get through that class. And from that point on, I got more confidence. And so by the time I finished that class, I thought, well, there might be some hope for me in the teaching profession after all. So after those classes, uh, I went to, uh, I was looking for a job, and Penn State Altoona actually needed a person that was fluid in lifetime sport activities. Well, there I was. All the sports that I had learned here, uh, and fencing from Mary Jane Pierce, I started teaching that. The kids loved it. They loved to poke each other with those things. It was tough keeping them from killing each other, but I managed that. So, um, I lost where I was there. So, all those activities got me to Penn State, and uh, the first day that I walked in the gym, the court the gym was probably about this big, maybe a little larger, but there were lines all over the floor. I mean, brown lines, yellow lines, green lines, white lines, red lines. And one of my first former players, Chris, is with me tonight. She has been my lifelong friend since the first time she was in, in uh, my playing, uh, was one of my players. She looked up at her friends because I said, where's the volleyball court? And she and her friends looked up and said, oh no, this is not going to be good. Not going to be good. So because I was so raw and quite a rookie, I took a lot of seminar classes in teaching activities uh, at different phys ed conferences. Uh, I went to coaching clinics to try to get better at the coaching aspect, trying to get inside the kids' heads and so forth. And uh, as I said, 28 years later, I managed to end my coaching career. But halfway through that coaching career, I decided I wanted to do something else. And one of my friends here at West Virginia was an athletic trainer. And uh, he was a graduate assistant. And we hung out a lot together, and he was a very dear friend. And um, so we, uh, I knew what he did, and it sounded like pretty cool things. And I'm sorry, athletic trainers, that you're here. I am not, was not a good athletic trainer. Uh, I did that as a third thing, but I did manage to get the certification. And uh, so when I was here, I got injured one of my summers playing softball. And I got hurt, and you know, like most, I, I was a trainer, and so I said, you know, it's one of those things, put ice on it. 
So after I got injured, I put ice on it. And like most of us, and this is way back a long time ago for you younger people, we just went back out and played the next day. So I kept playing, putting ice on it, playing, putting ice on it. And I said, Steve, this thing is not getting better. What should I do? Guess who he sent me to? He said, go see Whitey. So I went to see Whitey. And after two or three treatments, he said, you know, that was the worst Charlie horse I have ever seen. He said, why did you do that? So anyway, with Steve and, and Whitey's backgrounds, I found out that for my next career activity, that I would like to become an athletic trainer. So midway, midway through my tenure at Altoona, I decided to study and become an athletic trainer. And it took me about two years, a thousand hours of contact work, going and supervising someone, having to drive uh, every day of the week to, to a college that was about uh, 40 miles away, in ice and snow, and so forth. But I did manage to get an athletic training license. But that's neither here nor there, but what is important is the education that I received at West Virginia. I can't say enough about the quality of the instructors, the information that they gave to me, the skills, the knowledge, and life skills and lifetime activities that they provided me with that has surpassed and helped me through those 35 years of teaching and 28 years of coaching. So I just want to thank them for giving me all of that uh, confidence and the uh, life sports and everything that I got from West Virginia that helped shape me in my teaching and coaching profession. So again, thank you for this honor, uh, and I'm uh, deeply proud to be a part of this group. Thank you. outstanding academic credentials. He received his undergraduate degree from West Virginia University Sport Management Program with the perfect 4.0 GPA. He received his PhD from The Ohio State University, achieving an overall GPA of a 3.98. Dr. Mahoney is currently the president of Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Dan was also the Dean and Professor of Higher Education at Kent State University and the University of Louisville, where he developed the Master's Degree Program in Sport Administration. He has also served on editorial boards of the Journal of Sport Management and the Journal of Sport Marketing Quarterly and has published numerous articles in these magazines. In 2015, Dan was awarded the McInnes Ryan Award for leadership by the American Association of University Administrators for his success in university leadership. Introducing Dr. Mahoney this evening is Dr. Dallas Branch. I don't know if I want to touch this lecture, and there's so many germs going around here. I actually went out and asked for a, a shot of liquor. Uh, anyway, it's nice to be back among you. As a faculty member here for 29 years and now retired, we often refer to administrators as those that have gone to the dark side. For most of you, that's still true. But for Dan, I can certainly tell you it's not true. Dan, as was mentioned, is serving now as president of Winthrop University. He is the only, first and only, individual, to my knowledge, who, who's received a doctorate in sport management, who has become a university president. As was said, as was said too, he served as seven years of dean of the College of Education, Health, and Human Services 
and a professor at Kent State University. He spent 13 years as a faculty member and administrator at the University of Louisville. He assumed positions as program chair, department chair, associate dean, assistant provost, and associate provost. But his training was in accounting. He worked for KMPG, one of the big eight accounting firms, as an accountant after receiving his bachelor's degree in accounting from Virginia Tech. He received his master's degree here. His stop here at WVU was only one of many stops. But we recognize him tonight because the stop he made here was so important for us, but also important for his career development. So I, I refer to Dan as in, in two ways. I refer to him as somebody who's very smart, but also very principled. His research was principally driven. He received the highest award in our discipline, the Earl F. Ziegler Award from NASA, the North American Society of Sport Management. That was in 2007. He published over 60 articles, has a book, has several book chapters. That was mentioned earlier. But I would like to just share with you how he's been viewed by the profession. He's been recognized for his principled and ethical leadership practices and scholarship regarding issues of justice, justice and ethics. As a matter of fact, while at Kent State, right before leaving, he received his college's top diversity award that has been since named in his honor. So, without further ado, I would say that Dan, being a very good man, has behind him, or maybe in front of him, a very good woman. And I'd like to recognize Laura, his wife, who made all of these stops with him. And Dan, it's obviously a, a pleasure to welcome you back to campus. I know you're busy, but we sure enjoyed the year, year and a half we had with you. And it was important for us, and hopefully it was as important for you. So Dan, congratulations. Mountaineer family. 
Um, I learned a lot about how you treat people when they come into your home, and that stayed with me for the rest of my life. I also had the opportunity to make great friends when I was here. I certainly made friends in the sport management program, many of whom I keep in touch with till this day. I had a friend from high school who was a high school wrestling teammate uh, who was in dental school here, and I made friends through, through the friends he had. I even made friends when I moved into the fraternity house for the summer. See, I needed a place to stay for the summer, and so I went to the fraternity that had joined at Virginia Tech. I knew no one there, but said I was welcome to stay, and it was $25 a week. What a deal. Could not pass that up. <laughs> they took me out the first night I moved in, and I felt part of that family almost immediately. Um, it was one of my favorite summers. Now, my mom cried when she came to pick me up and saw the living conditions in that fraternity house, but I had a great time with it nonetheless. Um, several months after I left West Virginia, I came back for a football game with another University of Cincinnati intern. And everywhere we went, people came up to me and started, kept welcoming me back. My friend was stunned because he could not understand how I could have only been here for a year and knew so many people and thought that perhaps I was much more special than he had surmised up to that point. <laughs> I was not because really it was West Virginia that was special, and I think a lot of people would have had that same experience when they came back. The truth is, every chance I have, uh, can come back, I feel very much like I'm coming home, even though, again, I only spent less than 2% of my life here. But perhaps the most important thing that happened to me was what happened in the sport management program. I never missed a class during my time here, not because I felt that I had to go, but because I wanted to go. The professors were great, and really for the first time in my life, I loved education. I loved being a student. I loved every part of it. Uh, the faculty had a huge impact on me. It was Andy Ostra who first suggested to me that perhaps I should get my doctorate and be a college professor. That was something that I had never considered before that moment. It was Dana Brooks who first suggested to me I could uh, write something that was publishable when I took this sports sociology class, which is still my favorite all-time class that I've ever had. Um, and I would even saying I could do something that was publishable was even further beyond my reach, I thought, at that point. Um, than even being a professor was. I came here wanting to be an AD, but I left thinking that perhaps I wanted to be a faculty member. And I said, as I said this before, when I had the opportunity, this program had a huge influence on me. When I taught my classes, I thought about things that Dallas did, that Dana did, and my other professors did. Um, when students came up to me and said, I need an independent study to make, continue to make progress to a degree, I kept thinking, Bill Ossoff did that for me when I was at West Virginia, so I guess I gotta do it for you too. So I paid that for it, I don't know how many times I did those independent <laughs> studies, and Bill always came to mind when I did it. And I shamelessly stole many of Dallas's ideas when I had a chance to run the uh, sport management program at, at the University of Louisville. And of course, my success running the program led to being a department chair and really everything else that happened in my career path. So that really set me up for that future success. And even along the way, I continue to steal ideas. Um, you, if you go to the College of Education, Health, and Human Services at Kent State, you will see they have a Hall of Fame ceremony every year. Guess where I got that idea from? I stole it basically from this as well. And I'd be remiss if I did not point out two other benefits during my time here. Soon after I interviewed, Craig Walker from the Athletic Department called to offer me a graduate assistantship in the Athletic Business Office. That was one of the best phone calls I ever got. Um, and not only provided me the much needed financial support, because I really had no idea how I was paying for a master's program, I just knew I was going to do it. Uh, but it also allowed me to learn the Pacquiao and computer system that was becoming popular with athletic departments at the time, and I'll get to that in a second. Second, one of Dallas's idea was to collect internships, lists of internships available across the country. There were actually a lot fewer back in those days. Athletic departments didn't use interns nearly as much. So when I saw the University of Cincinnati had multiple internships open, I applied immediately. I got the position very quickly, in part because I applied before anyone else did, and because I had experience with Pacquiao, which they were transitioning to during the next year. Um, I actually interviewed, got the job, accepted the job, before they advertised the position. Uh, I think that violates some HR rules, but I was still happy nonetheless. Uh, my time at Cincinnati was, was particularly valuable, too. First, it was a wonderful learning experience. It provided me with lots of war stories that I've been able to use in the classroom for many years since then. Um, it all, those war stories also quickly convinced me that I did not want a career in college athletics and I should follow Andy's advice, get my doctorate and become a faculty member. The second and, and by far biggest benefit was I met my wife there, uh, Laura, and marrying her was by far the best decision I ever made. In fact, I'm not sure if she knows this, but it's actually 27 years ago tonight was the first night I ever kissed her and I have not stopped since. <laughs> so what difference can less than 2% make? All the difference in the world. It can change your life, and it can cer and certainly change mine. I would not be where I was, am today if it was not for WVBU and my experiences in the college, uh, in this college. 
and I cannot be more appreciative and thankful for everything that this university and CPAS did for me. So again, thank you so much. This evening, we listened to our five inductees speak of their memories, challenges, and inspirations within their professional journeys. The words West Virginia University Hall of Fame will now be added to their list of accolades. The Hall of Fame Committee is proud of you, we congratulate you, and we have honored you tonight. Thank you very much. I'll invite John Spire to the podium, please. John Spire. Does anybody have a clean water glass? <laughs> it's indeed an honor for me to present Jean Arion, Dr. Jean Arion, as the outstanding alum for 2017. Gene was a graduate, has already been alluded to, uh, with DC and, and Sam back in that era, same era. And frankly, uh, Gene and I stay in touch on a regular basis. We have to, because I can't keep up with everything she's doing. And if I waited more than about six months to talk to her, then I, I could never get it straight, because she is one of the most productive people I have ever seen. And when I say productive, I'm talking about academic productivity. Now, you could define productivity in a lot of different ways. Uh, I would be remiss in not pausing for a moment when I talk about productivity, because Jean and her husband, Glenn, who unfortunately could not be here tonight, but he's one of the funniest guys you ever meet. Uh, you don't think so? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Fill up his son's house with your tonight. <laughs> uh, have five lovely children three of which were born at the same time in the middle of all of her academic studies. So she has triplets, and they all graduated last year, and Philip, who's in graduate school here now, is one of those, so what an accomplishment. Now that puts productivity in new perspective, don't you think? I'd like to pause for a moment, because the athletic training's been mentioned so much here tonight, but I'm a little embarrassed by how much credit I get for this program. I was just the one that started this. I happened to be the first faculty member hired. We had unbelievable people around. Some people have mentioned Sam Kegris and, and Bud Tice. And, but Randy Metter and Vince Stilber, sitting back here right now, have been far more than I could ever describe and you could imagine. So if we could have Randy and Vince stand, we should give them a call. So again, Jean has been, as I said, academically productive beyond words. She has a BS in here, here from in athletic training and physical education from West Virginia University in 19, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> previously, and two degrees from Temple University uh, with a master's and a, a, physical, a, a physical therapy degree and then later received her EDD from the University of Arkansas in Little Rock. But she has never not been in school. She has always been in school doing something. Is that not right, Philip? Always in school. So she's in school improving her own education or doing all kinds of additional credentialing. She is an absolute leader in the American Physical Therapy Association. She has written not chapters in books, but books. She has written textbooks she, uh, on many different subjects. She's one of the uh, leaders in specialties in the uh, American Physical Therapy Association, where one can now get a specialty in a lot of different areas. Well, she didn't just get some specialties in aquatic therapy and women's health. She actually serves as the chairman of the specialties committee. So she's done it all and uh, continues to do it all. She's currently uh, decided to take on a new role recently in the last couple of years at Emory and Henry University, where she's department chair and director of the physical therapy program. 
and is making great sacrifice to be here this weekend because their accreditation group, committee, their uh, institution is being evaluated next week for their initial credential. Those of you in academics, and we most of us have been affected by it, know how strenuous that is. So Jean has, has done a lot, and I started to look at what else she has done, and I thought maybe some of you could help me with this. Uh, let's, let's see. We, we have, this, this is her, uh, this, is, uh, this is just a list of single space uh, things that she has literally produced. And, and I didn't think I could read it all, but I thought that I'd pass this around. And we can all use it. Because this is literally, literally her resume. She has more grants, more publications, and more scholarly luck with productivity than most faculties. So, with that, I would like to say she is a very outstanding alum and we could never in any fashion select well, this is kind of messy select a more outstanding alum than Jean Dr. Jean Ariana. Her family's here, though like most of it except Glenn's not here and a couple other kids, but we're happy to have the family here. Jean, you're the best. Thank you. and many, many of my colleagues are here this evening and my former classmates, and I appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you, John, for that gracious introduction. You've not been just a friend, but a dear mentor and helped me along the way. I can call you a colleague now, and I have for a long time. Sabra, you are my second mom. Thank you. To those inducted this evening into the Hall of Fame, my heartiest congratulations to you all. So, I can happily say that Sam and DC are older than I, <laughs> just a few years, but they were here as my peers as you've heard this evening. <clears throat> we were in the athletic training program in the same era. Um, I was a sophomore, DC was a senior. I was assigned to baseball with DC. Baseball in March in Morgantown is not a whole lot of fun, but we endure it. <clears throat> After that, as, you, as you've heard, mine and um, DC's paths crossed again when he was at Temple University when I was there as a student, he was there as an assistant athletic trainer. So we passed, our, we passed again that time. I would like to thank my friends and family that are here this evening to support me. To my college friends, Jess Hudson, and Anne Freemal, my sincere thanks for your true friendship over the years. The Fremount bed and breakfast is always available for me when I come to town. To my siblings, I have three of my five siblings here this evening with me. My sister-in-laws, my niece, I appreciate you being here and being supportive of me. Thank you so very much. They've traveled a distance to get here, mostly from Eastern Pennsylvania. Our parents instilled a value in us of a high work ethic, but also of serving others. And so that's what I grew up around. I also want to recognize my children, as you've heard. Um, our attempt at number three was supposed to be one. We waited to have our third child so we wouldn't have three in college at one time. <laughs> the best laid plans. So Philip is here with me this evening. Our children are all over the states. 
They've endured my professional responsibilities and a lot of time away from them. But they've all forged very well professionally and have become great adults. To my husband, Glenn, who's on FaceTime right now, because he's in Las Vegas, but he's fulfilling a professional responsibility himself and was able to be here this evening. Forging our careers while trying to raise five children was not always easy. We don't remember the first 18 months of triplets. I was two thirds of the way done with my doctoral studies when they came along. My tenure clock was ticking. My board recertification was due, but we forged on. He has supported me in some very challenging times and has grounded me when I thought things couldn't get done and he told me they could. He's also been there for our children, for, our, for him to raise them along with me, and I'm dearly grateful for that. As you would suspect, I have many items in my office that are from WBU hanging on my walls. But shortly after I moved to Virginia, I found a plaque that said, work hard, stay humble. I feel this way as I try to live my life, and I try to instill those values in my students that have taught over the last 27 years. The roots of my academic work here at WBU did instill those values in me also, and I'm forever grateful for that. What I experienced here at WBU was definitely the cornerstone of my career and my career development and my aspirations, and for that I'm very grateful. I humbly accept this award this evening in knowing those that have come before me that have gotten this award and what they have done. I know what it's like to be a mountaineer and to share that spirit with all of you in this room. Thank you for this honor, and I will cherish it and this university to which I owe a great deal. Thank you very much. Yeah. First of all, stand class of 2018, 17, stand up. Hope you stand up. 17 class, new class, stand. Hall of Fame inductees, stand up, please. One more time. Stand, stand, stand. Stand up. Miss Jean Bonzo, please come forward. Miss Jean Bonzo. Bonzo also designed a envelope with stamps of the years. And what I did, you know me, I collect things. <laughs> my tribute to Bill Bonzo and all those lives he touched. Sway, thank you, Mr. Bonzo. Mr. Bonzo, tribute, say thank you very much. I'd like to speak. Yes. 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 This is quite a surprise and very much an honor. Thank you very, very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Gene. All right. As we end, 
each inductee this year touched my life. You changed me. Then, so such so for class, we talk publishing. He is a master in scholarship, his discipline, Dan Mahoney. Sport management, yes. Tick, we go back many years. Not just me, but just a person, a friend. Thank you. Gene Arian. Gene, we go back as well with Abdullah Jess Hudson. We play basketball together. Thank you, Gene, for your leadership. Sam Booth, let's stop. You've not lived until you tried to coach women's softball. <laughs> I'll coach third base. Sam, the team's playing. My job was not to make a lineup. No, they made up gave it to me. Just a team. I played third base, coach. I say, stop, they go. I said, it's different. <laughs> My job was third base and wave if they went by. <laughs> Take your time. Is that true, Sam? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. We're here. DC Coke, we go back, DC. All of Mountain Air Field. You're a great man. We're here. Thank you, DC. Where's DC now? Yeah, thank you. Good to see you. Who I miss? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 